Okay, so we've talked about instrument uncertainty, the smallest unit on your measuring device. Um, but you have to use your measuring device well. Human error means you're blundered, right? So you practice, you take measurements over and over. Usually you do that before you run your actual experiment and take your data, and that's okay. You throw away all that stuff because you weren't ready, you could just get yourself ready. Okay. For instance, a meter step, right? You've got uh, a tenth of a, know what that is, a tenth of a centimeter. I mean, a tenth of a meter, 10 centimeters. One centimeter, like a pinky, a little less than a pinky worth, right? And then one millimeter, which is a, a tenth of a centimeter. As you can see in the, in the centimeters, there's 10 little lines. So that's pretty good. But you notice that when you're measuring something, how long something is, you're lining up the edge of the thing with the lines here. If I go like that, there's a gap between the line on my meter stick and the edge of the thing I'm measuring. If I angle it, all of a sudden I get a longer, uh, a bigger number, a longer length across the sides than I really want to go straight across the sides. So there's a few things that you can do that make your instrument not as good or put, uh, give it as good a data as you, as you want. So one thing you can do is put the lines right next to each other and then you don't have that little visual error of trying to line up the, the lines. Take a look now. So uh, what I'm talking about here is maximizing the ability of a one meter or two meter stick. And we can do that with sliding caliper jaws. Think of a caliper, I don't know, caliper, look at the roots, but caliper grabbing the jaws. Now it's still going to be your meter stick, so you're still going to have an uncertainty of plus or minus a tenth of a centimeter, because 10 marks in one centimeter, or which is the same amount as plus or minus 0 0.001 meter, this is centimeter, 10 centimeters, one meter, which is the same as a millimeter. So we should be able to go back and forth, get used to that, that's fine. So we can use these sliding caliper jaws, and that's pretty nice. So for example, let's take a look over here at this box. Um, here's these jaws that I can slide on here. And if I want to get the outside diameter, as engineers often talk about the outside diameter, I make this straight edge. So I'm going to, not, I'm going to look on the straight edge side. I don't care about that side. Grab one end, go to the other. Now there's play. So if I'm really taking measurements, I've got to talk about that. But I grab it. I lock them down. I usually don't use the zero end because that's a little bit fuzzy. So we often will set it on 10, right, and do it nicely. Lock that down, right? And then slide it in, and remembering to subtract 10, very easy not to, especially if you're chatting about whatever, the giants or whatever. You lock that down, and I get, oh, that's 35, looking right here, 0 0.1234, let's say 35.4. Minus 10, 25.4. What units? Centimeters, right? So great. But I did squeeze it, so that's kind of weird. Now what about getting the inside diameter? I mean, how do I do that? Well, one way is you flip these jaws so that the straight side, again, I put that over here to zero, or excuse me, to 10, avoiding the end. Often a good idea. And then I flip this side. So I can get the inside diameter here. Then I go like that, and that's pretty good. Now I could do it without these guys, but lining up the, those lines is going to make it so that it's a little harder to get that. If I don't have them, I might say, well, measurements are going to be difficult to see. But, you know, common about the instruments are still a uh, tenth of a centimeter. So there I go. And if you really want to, you could also go from the inside over here turn this one around and have the flat edge grab the outside there. So whatever, and you do your engineering sketch and you've got it. So that's a nice tool for, for improving that use. The issue here is something called parallax. And it comes up a lot, the dreaded parallax. 
where you line up two lines and look straight across. So you've got the edge of whatever you're lining and then the line of your instrument. So for example, take a look. Are these two, let me do it this way, uh, this way, are these two lined up for you? Now, if I keep them just like that, but I go over here, and you stay there, they're not lined up anymore, are they? But they are lined up for me. I see, you know, my pinky's behind my thumb. But if you look from the side, my pinky's not behind my thumb. So you might go, oh, shift the measuring instrument. So that's good. That's not good. That's not good. But they're still lined up. So you have to move your head to make sure you line those things up and avoid that parallax error. And these sliding caliper jaws are great. Speaking of calipers, we mentioned before that there's something called a vernier caliper. Not going to work for that box since it only goes about 12 centimeters out, but it works. You'll see that it's got the straight edge down here to grab the outside, and it's got the straight edges here. Those are lined up. So it doesn't matter what you use to grab that inside panel. Right? So either side, you've got it right there, and it'll slide. Now the cool thing about this is, you've got a tenth of a centimeter here. This will be good to a hundredth of a centimeter. So how do you read it? Very difficult to see this. So we have this exaggerated device here. So what you're going to do, write this down, Vernier calipers, you use them a bunch, try it, just do it over and over. You can get, you know, maximum of 12 centimeters, a little more than a fist. It'll read this way. So you're going to look at it and try to get this number, which is 0 to 11, point something, something centimeters. So the first bit out here, which is as good as a meter stick, is read with this sliding zero, from the sliding zero. Watch. That clearly measures zero. And the zero is in the window. I don't line it up here. Oh, look, that's a zero. But that's not zero. So that's not where the reading is. The reading comes from the sliding zero. Zero. One. Easy enough. Ah, getting all stuck there. Uh, all right, fine. One, one point one, one point two, one point three. You got to kind of figure out. Oh, there's a one in there, and it's kind of hard to get a backtrack. But one point three, one point four. Right. Come back in here. There's zero. Certainly zero. Point one, point two. Well, what about in between? Now, this bottom scale lets us get that in between. So if I say I've got 1.2, here I am, 1.1, 1.2, plus a little bit, that means I got 1.2 from the sliding zero. And how do I know how much I'm past the point 0.2? Clearly, I'm past the point 0.2, 1.2 something. And the way I find that number, is I look at whichever sliding number, these guys in the window, bottom of the window, that line up with any line above it. I don't care what the line is above because I already used these lines, but whichever one. So here, in this case, let me do it over here. Let's put it here. So this one doesn't line up with anything above it. This one does not line up with anything above it. That doesn't either. That doesn't. That's pretty good. That guy lines up. I don't care what it lines up with. It's the one, two, three, the four lines up with something above it. So it would be 1.2 something. 1.2 4. Now, it can be iffy. Your lab partner might say 3, and your other lab partner might say 5. So it can be pretty close. These guys can be pretty close. But over here, you're going to see no. You're both no, not that, not that. So kind of ballpark it, and you'll find whichever one lines up. And then you've got better than your meter stick by one decimal place. And that's how you read your, your caliper. Kind of nice, right?
the sliding zero gives you these guys, and then whichever number down here lines up with anything, who cares, that gives you this one. And that's it, just if you need to review, it's on